game. Crows by four goals. That is okay. Alicia? Yeah, I say Crows by five goals. And uh, Young Fitzgerald's got Aaron yep. Phillips there. So that's going to be a, a, a match-up to watch. The 19-year-old on the 36-year-old. We're away. Moody gets her palm to it first. Fitzgerald with an early win. Handballs it backwards. And then the hurried kick through the corridor. Cranston did well to get rid of opponent. Fires up the handball to Lamb, to Lachlan. Getting involved also was Blackburn. A hurried kick into the pocket. Oh, that's a free kick. Every day of the week, Rachich has given it away. It looks like she's got the early matchup on their key goal kicker, Bonnie Toogood. Well, that's a real, that's a really uncharacteristic thing there for Rachich, but also Adelaide's defence. They the, the stat in the competition, Kel, that they're last in is freeze against. So they've started with one of the, with the, with such a blemish. But uh, what a terrific start for the Western Bulldogs to get the clearance and now shot on goal. Can Bonnie too good? Make an early statement here for the visitors. It would be the dream start for the Bulldogs. She stabs at that one and she's put it through. Well, we spoke at the opener, Jess Fitzgerald going to the 36 year old, the champion Aaron Phillips, and we thought it was going to be a really good teachable moment. What a teachable game. But as we saw in the opening bounce, the clearance there, just the class of Fitzgerald, you know, just rose above some good decisions. Ferris, they go inside 50 and a free kick going the way of the dogs. Too good is on the scoreboard. And just a beautiful start to Kirsty Lamb as well. Uh, a handball receive, we spoke that she's got really high handball receive numbers, but a beautiful kick to advantage there for Bonnie Too Good. So great start for the doggies. So three goals, seven coming in for Bonnie Too Good. She'd make that four goals, seven. Phillips goes without it. Here go the dogs sending it forward again through Blackburn and Lamb to Fitzgerald. Pumps it inside, 50, charging out again. It's almost like an instant replay. Too Good spins her way out of trouble. Handballs over to Fitzgerald. Puts it on the boot under the pump. There is Allen. And Nell Morris Dalton is going to stab it through right on the line. Kel, that started from centre bounce, and if you look at the positioning of all the doggies' midfielders when that when that ball was thrown up, they were all taking the outside position of the Crows' midfielders, which means they were able to push him in under the ball, and then once the doggies won it, they were all of a, all of a sudden on the outside in best position and could get the ball moving forward. Well, we saw Fitzgerald lining up there. She was the one who did the damage in the middle, and then she pushed forward. And where was Phillips? Not anywhere near Fitzgerald on that inside 50. Wow. So one goal for Too Good coming in for the season. She's got her second. One goal for Morris Dalton coming in. She's got her second. Moody straight down to Blackburn. This is an explosive start from the Dogs. That's Aurora Smith, the debutante. Runs into a brick wall and then she tackles Rychich. Crows under the pump, the acting skipper and Sarah Allen. Chain of handballs across half back. Marinoff on her left, a little give and go with Gould. Marinoff trying to just get their engine started. Bounces off the chest here. Uh, not quite a mark taken by Whiteley. And the dogs clear it around the outer side. Lachlan. Gives it back to Pritchard. Kicking to Too Good, who was 1v2. And Bedell, who's been so good since she's found a spot down back. Goes backwards. Rachich under the pump and good composure. They're three key defenders combining so well there. Sarah Allen out to Hatchard. Just starting to find their groove now. Although it looked like promising on the build up Shiloh, but an, another turnover. So the dogs really can pounce Alicia. And the dogs have done their homework this week. It looks like they're really trying to shut down that short kicking option by, by the Crows. Sorry, Kelly, let me call this. <laughs> so Fitzgerald couldn't quite find Cranston. Fitzgerald again, what a sizzling start she's made to this Sunday afternoon contest. Too good, Pritchard. Ferris from 50 to the hot spot. Who's there? Bedell had to get down. Awkward bounce for her. Morris Dalton gets involved, flicks it back. Cranston, Cranston gives it up to a teammate with a quick snap, but it's a miss by Goodneck. They are pressuring and pressuring Shiloh. Well, they are, and there was a little bit of let off, little bit of a let off there. There was certainly an opportunity for a goal there. The Dogs had two goals before the Crows registered a stat this game.
That is a good stat. Bedell goes straight down the centre, centre half back here. Fitzgerald again, just a little slap down. Pritchard under the pump. At the bottom of that pack, they fight and scrap, and Ponta just tries to charge her way through. Picked up by Blackburn. Explosive speed to burn, and then pierces it into the pocket where Cranston. She might get it back here. A fumble. Too good. Cranston. Can they take on these Crows defenders? Lachlan. She loves a goal, but that one is going to miss everything. And this isn't a bad outcome for the Western Bulldogs. Um, when we played them a couple of weeks ago, forward 50 stoppages for them, were, they were very, very dangerous. Look for Blackburn and Lamb to block for each other. Look for a forward coming into this stoppage. They get very agile around this. So this is a, the Crows are going to be on here. There's an issue we'll get down to Jess in a moment. That's the debutante, Aurora Smith. Ponta through traffic. Oh, what a tackle. Wrapping her up is Cranston. And she knew she had her as well. Well, maybe a little bit of lack of respect for the dogs today, Kel, from probably the premiership favourites, the form team in the competition, really not respecting the young dogs. It's, we know it's a team full of talent. If we look at Fitzgerald, she's leading possession winner on the ground. Four touches. Her direct opponent, Phillips, zero. Leading goal kicker for the Cats last year. And then delisted at her third club. Cranston, pretty much directly in front, but she has put it through. It sneaks in for Rocky. Well, Kel, I know coaches bang on all the time about the importance of contested possession, uh, but right now I think it's telling the story. The doggies are just going a little bit harder at the contest. They're winning that inside ball and then they're getting it to the outside quickly and efficiently, and at the moment they're plus five contested possessions. Heading into this round six clash, Adelaide had only considered, conceded one goal in first quarters. One goal in total. Already they've conceded three goals here in the first five minutes of play. Moody dominating in the middle. Lamb taken high, wins a free kick. She'll wheel around. This has been an explosive start from the Bulldogs. Too good. Eyes on the ball and has taken out a teammate in doing so. Is that Brooke Lachlan? So, Brooke Lachlan, brave and at the last minute, but just at that glancing blow with the right shoulder. Well, you know, generally it's the lead-up forward that's got right away and Lachlan running back with the flight of the footy. Just coming across the path of Too Good in, in the play there. Too Good probably knowing she had the runway in front of her and just leading up and attacking the contest. Maybe not even having an awareness that her teammate was there. You can see their eyes on the ball and, yeah, Lachlan's come across her path and tried to take that mark. We've seen more courageous acts in this competition this year, it feels like, Alicia, than ever before. Yeah, there's quite a few each game, and, and Brooke Lachlan, she, she's as tough as it comes, and she didn't take her eyes off that ball then either. So, you know what, this might be a break in play that the Crows were, were hoping for, and um, Bonnie Tugut's got the ball outside 50. She might be looking for a hit-up. Brooke Lachlan started the game really, really well. Um, she's had four disposals already, um, so this this could be a big loss for the Doggies, um, but they'd, wanting to, they'd be wanting to look to score off this. And they might be down two because Aurora Smith... The 18-year-old playing her first game is still on the bench, getting work on her ankle, and now Lachlan off as well. So too good to really give the Adelaide Crows something to think about. Launches from 55 out. And that is a disappointing kick in the end. Easy to pick off for Allen. So expect this short game by Adelaide. They like to kick short and find loose targets, but they've turned it over there with a bit of pressure, Kel. They certainly have. Lynch dropped the mark in the end. Well picked up by Snell. And another turnover. So turnover City. Last couple of passages of play. Hatchard taking more marks than any other player in the competition this year. Through the centre. There's that short kicking game Alicia Eva told us about. Quick hands by Ponta. Gives it off. This is a chance now for Button. Sends it to the top of the goal square. And Ash Guest is there. First inside 50 for the Crows. Seven, so it was seven to zip Shiloh before they got their first inside 50. Ferris. 
tackle applied by Montana McKinnon. But to give you an indication of that, Kel, the Crows are plus 11 against their direct opponents this season in inside 50s in total. So such a different style of play we've seen from the Crows today. So McKinnon, who is the rising star nominee during the week for the Adelaide Crows, tapped that straight down to Snell. But Button with a great tackle, she'll be rewarded. Her and her sister, Rochelle Martin, they're the two tackling machines. Sends it into the pocket in the pack was Woodland. Phillips there as well, but the Bulldogs should be able to drive it out of the defensive 50. That was excellent work by Ferris. She was in the contest, got to the footy first, and then just was really smart in how she distributed it out to her teammate. Georgia Stathis to Snell, and then Snell dispossessed. If you've just switched on. Bulldogs kick into the right of screen. They've kicked the first three through two good Morris Dalton and Cranston. Can the Crows get a reply in the second half of this opening term, Alicia? Well, I think the inside 50s uh, heavily weighted to the Dogs is indicative of first possession from the tap. Hatchard looking for Jones, just a little offline, overcooked the kick. Yeah, so indicative of first possession off the, the ruck hands, and the doggies seem to be winning that more often than, than the Crows at this stage. And again, if you look at contested possessions, uh, Bulldogs plus, plus 10 at the moment. Phillips into the ruck. She's going to go, well, not quite really head-to-head -head with Edmonds. More like shoulder to head there, but Phillips never gives up on the contest. Ponta with a sidestep. She's tackled. Georgia Stathis can't squeeze out the kick. Phillips tries to inspire her team. High ball under the pump. Here's a chance for Rochelle Martin. And a tangle of arms and legs on the bottom of that pack is Whiteley. That was Phillips' first touch for the game. It's taken her about 10 minutes. Into the ruck again. Leaps but can't get near it. Ferris, Grant. Well played here. Good little snap and an opportunity for Munyad. She's put it through. Well, it was a bit more of a scrap then, um, but I don't necessarily think that's a bad thing for the Adelaide Crows. It, it, it runs a bit of time off the clock. It gives them a chance to set up behind the ball and they hit the scoreboard. And Leisha was those repeated inside 50 entries. They couldn't, the dogs weren't able to penetrate or exit the D50 very convincingly. And it's just the pressure on the class of the Crows to be able to win the footy in those contested moments to bring the footy back in, create some chaos, gets a goal. So Hannah Munyard, the 20 year old, her second goal in AFLW. We've just heard Kel too. Aurora Smith may not be coming back for the game. So done for the day on debut. So the doggies are definitely one down here. Marinoff does well, tries to fire it out to Phillips. Fitzgerald. And the dogs can work it. Too good. Right in the centre of the ground. Hartwig was with the quick kick that started this. Handball over the top to Blackburn. She's just going to thump it as long and as strong as she can. Moody in front position. Spoil came from Sarah Allen, the All-Australian defender. And then the quick hands off to Bedell. Hurried kick. They're out of strife momentarily. Always in safe hands with Marinoff's got it. Great composure there. Lower the eyes. Button. Bombs long. Good match up there between Brown and also Woodland. Brown wins on this occasion. She did well to bump Woodland out of the contest and then go and win the footy. But it's come straight back to the Crows. Jones, all by herself. She's got an eternity. Traps it. Hacks it. Launching in the pack was Woodland. And then a hurried snap. It's a bouncing ball. Has it got it? No. The wrong spin and wrong turn. And swooping is Fitzgerald. A 
pick up from Fitzgerald, so clean below her knees, and that's a really great indication of the talent that that kid has. She, we know she's going to be fantastic, and she's really, really bringing her A game today, just so smooth off the deck. And then the dist uh, distribution outside of 50, awesome. So the dogs have brought their A game so far. Marinoff with a good spoil laden. Warm applause from those Crows fans in the grandstand this afternoon. Overcast conditions, but very warm, around 34 degrees. Just want to highlight Bonnie too good. She started, she's had the seven touches already. She's had two marks and, and probably a third if a free kick wasn't given away. The Adelaide defenders are going to be, have to be really careful of where she's winning it because she's leading up at the ball too easily at the moment. So starting positions become really critical. Montana McKinnon straight down to Hatchard, wins the free, wants to move it quickly. Into the pocket she goes. Oh, Bulldogs are oh, well picked up by Mules. Handball's over the top to Phillips. Could have given it off. Instead, she goes for the snap. Was that touch? It's a push in the back. It's a push in the back, and it'll be a free kick to the Crows player directly in front, and Lisa Whiteley will take it. So Lisa Whiteley, old teammate of mine, yes. um, spent a lot of her time playing down back. Um, very, very strong 1v1. Um, one of the strongest players, and have really enjoyed seeing her go forward. She's kicked quite a few goals. Kel? Yep. She's kicked one from a couple of games this season. Let's make it two. Only the one. <laughs> and after the dogs kick the first three, the Crows hit back with the next two. And there's just seven points in it with three minutes to play in this opening term. Well, she's definitely had more than a couple of scoring shots. Um, <laughs> my teammates and I, have, we've, we've been messaging whilst watching these games and it's, it's fantastic to see her take this opportunity going forward and hitting the scoreboard. So very, very hard player to play on one-on-one, -on -one, very strong. And she, she takes the pressure off some of Adelaide's other forwards. So after the Bulldogs stunned with the first three goals, of this contest. The Crows have hit back with the next two. Just trying to find their rhythm now, their home deck. They absolutely love playing here. This is the reason why they've been able to hit the scoreboard. Marinoff's been so good. Ponta tried to do too much. Well done by Pritchard. Pritchard on the left. Over the head it'll go there of Morris Dalton. Well played by Button, but only as far as Cranston. Here's a chance, Sarah Allen. Reads it so well in the air. Just so courageous, Sarah Allen. Just calm, just floats across in front of, you know, forwards, key forwards all the time, and just so composed in those marking contests. Speaking of marking contests, that is a lovely mark taken by Isabel Pritchard. Short. Again, it's Button. Just the... One percenters, she's so good in that. Morris Dalton back to Blackburn. Blackburn goes for home. It needs to swing to the left, and it does. It's through for a major. Ellie makes something out of nothing. If the handball one-two goal is not a classic Ellie Blackburn play, I'm not <laughs> sure what is. I've seen that a quite a few times in my lifetime. Um, but, yeah, that's the class of Ellie Blackburn. Um, so important that the doggies move the ball quickly in, the, in their attacking half. Doesn't give Adelaide time to set up behind the ball. But, yeah, you can't stop Blackers when she's on the run like that. Now Morris Dalton, one of the most improved players in that dog's forward line. Probably benefiting from having his Huntington out of there. More opportunity. Has some class. Really good to see Nell Morris Dalton there having that score assist. It'll do a lot for her confidence. She had the opportunity to turn around and go on the boot, but had, saw Blackburn in, in a better position, able to give the handball away. And Blackburn, she's probably the best long kick for goal off 50 in the competition, you'd say. Marinoff again. Little toe poke to herself. And now a handball out into space. Fitzgerald, she's got Ferris for support. Mops it up beautifully. That was tidy on the picker. Tidy on the kick. No, Stevie Lee Thompson sits perfectly. And then she passes to a one on one. It was um, Woodland that was outmarked. And the dogs, good composure, last line of defence here. Lynch, the fullback. Well, slow it down, the dogs. Just try and maintain possession before the siren. Really calm, composed young team to be able to do this. Eleanor Brown. Well done. Elizabeth Snell playing just her fourth AFLW game. And remember half of the Dogs team, Kel, still under 21. 
Snell with a floater and a tumbler and Blackburn somehow able to just keep that in play with a chess mark. She is such a good player. Captain of this team. She's won best and fairest last year. Up for a ninth disposal. Is there still time here for the dogs? Not when Hatchard is swooping across that half back line and picking up her ninth disposal. So Adelaide will have a lot of players back behind the ball now, the last 30 seconds. Just kill, kill the time until uh, quarter time comes and they can reset. Rachich to Ponta. Ponta runs around the player on the mark, has a bounce and then goes long directly in front. Gould, the taller player. Oh, she's been told to play on. Handball's over the top, nine seconds to go. The dogs should be able to hold it up here. And that is a win for the visitors. Is that a holding the ball? It will be, so it's a free kick to the Crows. And a free kick to Gold. So a second opportunity here for Caitlin Gold. Wow, that was a hot free kick. Ferris did everything right in the contest there. She intercepted the mar or the, the handball out of the out of the stop out of the traffic. And then she was pounced on straight away. Not sure how much prior there was, but Gould is the beneficiary of a, a free kick. So the margin is 13 points. Can she make it seven? after the quarter time siren from directly in front she's kicked a couple already this season and that hasn't got the distance so the first stanza goes to the bulldogs they have well and truly dragged the crows out of their comfort zone at norwood Oak. the 18 year old from shepparton aurora smith who was making her debut played under less than three minutes in that first term didn't get a touch and she has suffered a knee injury we don't know how serious it is we'll get jess to get onto that but terrible news for the teenager. There's a whistle on this stoppage. Ali Blackburn wanted to take the advantage straight out of the centre and the umpires brought her back and said, Celine Mooney, the ruck, that's your job. So a nice start again for the Western Bulldogs. Might please the Adelaide coach, Matthew Clark. He was pretty dark, wasn't he? At quarter he time. was, yep. And Moody bombs it out of there. Cranston comes late. Eloise Jones. High ball. Grant from behind, but the player in front, Mills, stood her ground well. So Mills to Woodward. What a great matchup that is. She was the leading goal kicker in this competition up until yesterday when Taylor Harris passed her. Harris has got 11 for the year, and Woodland, rather, has got the 10. Just noting ball movement, Adelaide ball movement then actually kicking a little bit longer, gaining some territory early in the quarter. Hatchard curls the kick around, keeps it in. Michelle Martin ducked, but she is the smallest player in the competition. Umpire says play on, Gould to Whiteley. Whiteley fires out the handball. Who's there? Phillips lurking. Phillips can't quite Strip the Bulldogs defender Lynch of the ball there. She looks hungry. Hasn't had too much of an impact so far, Shiloh. Erin Phillips. No, it took her quite a, quite a period of time to get her first touch, maybe 12 minutes before she touched the footy. But, gee, when she did, she had her moments. And now she's in the ruck, Kel. Yep. Can do everything. Getting it down to Martin. And it's smothered there by Lamb. Sitting for Gould, who sweeps in and launches from the side. Too good, taken high. Play on into advantage. So it was Fitzgerald and then to Cranston, straight down the centre of the ground. This is going to make life tough here for Edmonds. It's all Crows. Jones usually uses it so well. Vidal, Rajic, teaming up with Najwa Allen. Piercing pass on the chest is Marinoff. Ebony's eyes are darting. She always wants to wheel around on that preferred left. Options galore. Jones with a fumble. That's rare. Good second effort. And what about that pass? The bullet into Mules. And Mules doesn't even want to go for goal. She gives it to Hatchard. And why wouldn't you? One of the most highly skilled players in the competition. And Hatchard is lining up for her first of the afternoon and to bring it back to a seven-point margin. Well, Eloise Jones was so important in that passage of play there. Despite the fumble, she got back hard defensively, outnumbered, won the footy and then got the ball on the way back. Kicks and doesn't get the distance. And a quick little snap here 
from Woodland, and that is her first blemish for the season, Shiloh. Ten straight she had kicked coming into this afternoon. Well, not bad for a defender. <laughs> She's finding her way in the forward line, that's for sure. She's Jeez. a terrific young player. Oh, remarkable story. Drafted by the Ds and then delisted. Let's go to give you an idea about the way Adelaide Crows started this quarter. They're travelling at 81% disposal efficiency, and they were 66% for that first quarter. So they've really upped their execution and really owning their possessions. Target there was Grant. They can't find it. So it'll be a boundary throw in. Here's the vision at quarter time of Aurora Smith. It breaks your heart, as I said, under three minutes in her first game in the AFLW. Didn't get a touch. She's injured her knee. Fingers crossed, Alicia. We've seen 10 ACLs this season, three in the preseason, seven over the first five rounds. Let's hope to goodness that that's not a really serious knee injury. Yeah, absolutely. That's pretty devastating vision to look at. But um, there's a lot of good people at the Western Bulldogs that will look after her and a few sitting at home today who, uh, if it is if it is the feared ACL, will be able to uh, help support her through that. Yep. Izzy Huntington, obviously, was one of those three in round one that went down with a knee injury. And we're sure she's probably at home on the couch. So big howdy to Izzy. She'll be pleased with what her team has been able to do so far. She's probably on the rehab bike, Cal. Can't keep Izzy Huntington down for too long. And of course the dogs are down too because Brooke Lachlan's been ruled out for the day with concussion. So they've got the lead. Can they hold their nerve here for the next two and a bit as Kirsty Lamb's feeling every bone in her body right now. And this, it was Hatch Hart and Marinoff that got her either side. I'm not getting out of that one. No. McKinnon straight down the throat of Lamb tackled by Hatch Hart. Call that a number of times today, Kel. Tough player, Hatchard. Like you said, Leash getting on the inside and then doing the work on the outside. McKinnon down to Lamb. Lamb thumps it. Bouncing ball. Too good did well to try and trap that one. And now Cranston. Morris Dalton. Back to Georgia Stathis. Into Lamb again. She set this up. Handball's over to Too Good. Gives it back to Kirsty Lamb. Could go all the way. Instead, she's given it off her to her teammate. And Goodnecht adds the finishing touches. Wonderful team goal by the Western Bulldogs. What I loved about that passage of play from the Western Bulldogs, Ellie Blackburn sitting on the bench, nothing. She didn't have to do anything in that passage of play. It was their kids that were involved. And we see they're too good to Lamb. Lamb just having the vision forward of the footy to see Goodneck, who'd done the work to race ahead of the contest, sensing they had the run of the play, and then is able to run into an open goal. Fantastic finish. Western Bulldogs, their kids are coming. Yeah, that passage of handballs, super, super clean. Nell Morris Dalton up the ground. Some young kids would very easily just put that on the boot, put it going forward, some of the older players do. So just the composure there um, to use the, the runners coming by for support. Very slick goal there by the Bulldogs. Good, good neck. First ever goal in AFLW. What a way to kick it. Look at their pressure. They are hungry. They are energised around the contest. And we've seen the dogs do this over the last couple of years under Nathan Burke's leadership. We know they're really good young team. So many under 21. It's just going to be this experience and consistency that they're going to need to bring. So two goods always the target down there. And it'll be a free kick for the Adelaide Crows. This is Maddie Newman. It's a great shot of how narrow the ground is at Norwood. Is it hard to play, Alicia, because it is so narrow, or you don't mind it? Uh, I've only played there a couple of times. But it, it, the way that the Adelaide Crows defend um, and they get that loose player behind the ball or they manufacture that loose player behind the ball, it's very hard to get through them, so it suits them nicely. Good crowd in for this one, despite the hot conditions. Munyard tries to deliver to her forwards. Ferris, Hartwick, tackled, affects the kick. Ferris, head over it, flicks it out. McKinnon tries to give it to Martin, who will always scrap. Oh, Lamb, what about the tackle on that? Spills the way of Moody. Morris Dalton off to Blackburn. Blackburn on the run. One of the best sights in the AFLW when Ellie Blackburn steaming down the wing. But her kick to the one-on-one -on -one favoured, really, Sarah Allen to Jones. 
Oh, what about that for a pass? Just hits up Newman on the chest. Classy player. Oh, slip through Martin. Dogs on the rebound. Can they torch them on the turnover? Fitzgerald this time's just going to sit it up and she asks Edmonds to run and launch. Got her hands to it. Couldn't quite pull it in. Well, again there, Morris Dalton just ran across the path there of Edmonds. She would have taken the mark. And just eluded little... each other a few times, haven't they? That's right. It's just, again, it's just about getting that, you know, the set up in their forward line. Just getting the synergy between the forwards, of course. They've lost, lost Lachlan, we know. We know about the hole with Huntington. Just the mix-up of players just changes things up a little bit. Too good to Lynch, who's floated down from that defensive 50. Look at the numbers back for the Crows. No other choice but just to put it up to a contest, ask Morris Dalton to run and launch. She does that. Blackburn always willing herself to the ball in the contest. Cranston on the outside of her foot of the boot, but there is no one home last line of defence. Jones a little casual. And now the kick has been picked off by too good. She is everywhere, Bonnie, at the moment, and she's a beautiful kick. It favours Moody, and the delivery was perfect. It was like she was going fishing, and she just hung it out in the air, and she asked her ruck to run and leap and mark, and that's exactly what Celine Moody did. Well, Lee, she spoke about the Crows having so many defenders behind the football, but when they won it, they really didn't have anyone upfield to look to. There was a pause, a hesitation. The pressure then came, and the turnover happened. Now Moody's got a shot on goal. Kicked her first only a week or so ago, directly in front. She's got her second. And it's the crab celebration for the Bulldogs. She converts. I've been super impressed with Bonnie Too Good's start. Uh, she's hit the scoreboard herself, kicked the one goal, but she's had five score involvements. She's just, you know, she's taking intercept marks across the Western Bulldogs half forward, and she's not wasting her disposals. Um, so five score involvements before half time. Uh, very impressive. Yeah, Too Good's really stepped up. I love her leadership. She's a great contested mark. The Dogs have got some really good contested marks in their forward line, don't they? Moody, Too Good, and of course, Morris Dalton. Just that um, explanation of the uh, crab celebration. I think Gabby Newton, who's an injured player for the Bulldogs, had a plan to do a motivational video for the team. It didn't work, so she tried to reenact it. And. Um, it's clearly working, Kel. I, I think that's her teammates just explaining uh, maybe a little signal to her to say hi and next time get the video to work or the DVD. OK, dogs. Old school, DVD. <laughs> well, what do you call it these days? VHS? Alicia doesn't know what I'm talking about. <laughs> uh, streaming, Kel, streaming. So, I don't understand. In the meantime, oh. Western Bulldogs are doing an amazing job. Against... And they're up by 24 points. And this is a team that has got a... No... I keep talking about it. 91% rebound rate from the Crows defenders. They're a phenomenal defensive unit. And the, and the young dogs have been able to penetrate that forward, that, their forward line. Biggest lead of the afternoon here. How do the Crows respond? They need to be able to catch Blackburn. And they can't at the moment. She's tearing it up. Looks for the delivery to Moody. The All-Australian defender, the acting captain this afternoon. There's no Chelsea Randall out there, and they're away. Off to Hatchard. Tackle. The pressure. Again, pressure creating turnovers. It's a free kick for downfield. I thought in the back where it happened, in fact, for over the shoulder. In fact, it's downfield for over the shoulder. But the pressure from the dogs. Munyard has got Woodland. Woodland has got two players at the top of the goal square. And Button says thank you very much and runs into an open goal and misses. She melted in the moment, did Hannah Button. Well, that sums up the Adelaide Crows afternoon to date. Well, plus two. When they moved the ball quickly, though, the dogs did look uh, a little bit nude out the back there. So that, that might be the way going forward. Under the pump, Georgia Stathis. Marinoff's got her, steals it, picks her pocket. Gives it off to Woodland. Kick across the face, Hartwick. Last line to Lynch. Oh, she's put a bit of air in that, but it came off okay. Brown. Just kicked it straight to the opposition. And picking it off was Charlton, her delivery. Not quite spot on, still the Crows, through Gould. Going to handball it over the top. Who she got? Hacked kick there by Charlton. 
Can they dribble it through for a much-needed goal? They can. It was an absolute scrap, but Gould got there. You see when Charlton took that initial intercept mark, she played on quickly and the Doggies didn't have time to set up defensively. So I mentioned it a few minutes ago earlier that when they play, when they move the ball quickly, they actually look dangerous. So I think that might be how they need to approach the last few minutes of this quarter. Absolutely. It's been a number of times that when the ball got over the back, there was a mix up on the free kick. Western Bulldogs didn't tra transition quick enough and Adelaide got plus two behind the contest. Really smart work from them. So Gord gets her first on the board for the afternoon. Gets that margin back to 17 points. McKinnon in the ruck. She was the Rising Star nominee this week. Montana McKinnon, only player on their list that didn't get an AFLW game last year. She's had to fight really hard to win her spot in this team. Slaps it down. Ball in dispute, Fitzgerald. And she's got the sisters either side. Repeat stoppages aren't a bad thing here for the Bulldogs with three minutes to go on the clock. This time it's Edmonds into space. Charlton, caught by Hunt. Considine with a hurried kick. Look at Mules, gets there, just tries to flick it back in. That was clever play because it comes the way of Martin. Martin can handball out in front of Marinoff. Marinoff gets rid of Lamb. She gets it back then. Chance for Martin. Over to Mules. Flicks it out wide. Here's the sharpshooter, the goal kicker in Woodland. Not on this occasion. It goes across the face. Ponta. Desperate. So too Hartwig. And the umpire says it'll be a throw in. So Western Bulldogs would be just looking to really lock down defensively here. All their midfielders should be owning the outside. Push the Adelaide Crows mids in under the ball. Repeat stoppages are a win. Repeat stoppages are a win here. Still yet to find their rhythm, the Crows. Gould. Button. It's the Dogs. Hunt. Just rockets that. Going back was McKinnon. Now she flicks it forward it's to the advantage of Thompson. To Najwa Allen. Kept it low. Almost chopped off by Lynch. And Lynch copped a knee to the head. Fitzgerald tries to barge her way through there, but she can't. I wonder if fitness will play a role in the second half here. We know, of course, the Dogs had 20 days out from playing, from COVID. Adelaide not so affected yet. And, and of course, you know, they're down two players, it seems, for the rest of the game. So going in nearly three goals up. Oh, his speed to burn by Stevie Lee. Her eyes light up. She spots the goals, and the umpire says it'll be a holding. Free kick to the Dogs against Danielle Ponta. And it's not just the Crows players that are in unfamiliar territory trailing. It's the Crows fans as well, Charlotte, and they're getting stuck in here. And I don't know how to lose the Adelaide Crows <laughs> women's fans, I should say. Yes, because I'm glad to clarify. They haven't lost too many games, have nope. they, in, in the six seasons of AFLW. They're such an amazing group of players. Their last loss was in that grand final on the 17th of April last year. And, of course, we know with expansion, Cal, we don't know how many of these players at the Adelaide Crows will be here next season. So, Port Adelaide, the head honchos might be hiding in the crowd there this afternoon, looking to pinch a few of these players. Most of them have stayed. It's been remarkable. Well, why wouldn't you when you've got players like this play to play alongside? If I could play alongside Randall, Phillips, Ponta, Thompson, Button, Martin. I don't know, the list goes on, Cal. They're such a wonderful group, but culturally, not too many players choose to leave the Adelaide Crows. Where does Aaron Phillips play next year, by the way, with Port Adelaide coming in? The dad, Greg, 343 games for Port Adelaide, seven premierships. <laughs> yeah. Hall of Famer, am I met by silence? Yeah, it's an interesting question, Kel. Um, we did discuss it earlier. <laughs> you, make, you make your own legacy, though, don't you, Leash? You, you, left, the, you left Collingwood, went to Giants, <laughs> you're creating a legacy there. Be defined by yourself, that's what I'd say. Erin? Will she go, Shiloh? I actually couldn't, I wouldn't, I, I don't know. I don't know. It's a hard one, isn't it? Yep. Well, she's 36, and maybe she wants to go out with the fairy tale third premiership if the Crows can win it this year as they're looking to build and snare one late in this opening half that has not been their half. We've seen them uh, change angles here by, by foot two, Kel, which we haven't seen much of so far in this game by Adelaide. And she 
continues to get better with every game. Eleanor Brown. So what an opening half and a statement by the Western Bulldogs. Currently right down the bottom of the ladder. This is a team that finished. Eloise Jones in that second quarter, so they need some more contributors across the ground. Ellie Blackburn has got a tag, and it's number five, Rochelle Martin. Here we go. All important third term. McKinnon wins the tap. Bulldogs at ground level. Fitzgerald lined up on Phillips again. Why wouldn't you keep her there? Did such a good job in that first half. Stevie Lee Thompson with a sidestep and the delivery almost good. Almost got there. But once again, the Dogs defenders working well together. Pritchard just continues to blossom with every game. She's going to be rewarded here, a 50-metre penalty. Just their execution, the Dogs under pressure. Such a young team. You know, the way in which they work with each other. Uh, Katie Lynch, I've loved the inclusion of Katie Lynch into the Western Bulldogs back half. Nice to have a left footer down there too. Here is a left footer. To, to land. Exactly. Short. Awkward little pick up, but Blackburn was up to the task. Gives it back to Lamb. The two stars in the midfield are able to deliver to two good. In fact, it's Goodnick. And Goodnick's taken a mark, probably too far out to score. I think that's one element of Kirsty Lamb's game that's really improved, and that's her kicking efficiency. It's probably been that, that thing that she's always just had to really work hard on. And I think with fitness and effort, it's coming. Kicked her first AFLW goal in the opening half here. That one just. Dropped a little shallow. Kirsty Lamb round the corner, surely not. She has. She's buried it from the pocket with a swivel of the hips. What a snap from Lamb. Well, we saw her do it a couple of weeks ago, Leash, to almost pull off that miraculous win against the Fremantle Dockers. Kirsty Lamb in traffic is just so dangerous, and she just knows where the footy is. Everyone's so only Blackburn focused, they forget how strong she is through the core. She's so good below her knees, and she's showing us all now that she can be a midfielder who can kick goals. She's having a huge, huge, huge impact uh, this season. Huge impact this season, Kirsty Lamb. Um, she's already she's racked up the three disposals this quarter, but quality disposals as well. It's not just numbers. It's midfielders can often accumulate uh, possessions because they're around the ball a lot, but they're impactful. And she's having a very impactful season. Oh, and they're bursting out of the centre again. It's a 23-point margin. Too good this time. She's got it. Bedell holds her up. But they're starting. This quarter, just as they started the match, repeated inside 50 entries from clearances. The pups are coming. Can they hold on? Georgia Stathis isn't going anywhere there. Hatchard's got her. And the umpire says, give it to me. Well, this is very, very interesting. The Adelaide Crows, Marinoff trying to lift. Off to Allen, Najwa Allen just kicks into space. And Grant, good awareness, good presence of mind, just to let it roll over, knowing the lasso would come and she'd win the free kick. Oh, smother into the player on the mark. Stevie Lee Thompson is caught by Grant. And she's just taken it too high. A contest within a contest, Shiloh. This is fantastic. Love it. Love this kind of play. Didn't get much time for the free kick for the lasso rule. The, hot, the umpire was hot on the play on. Jones in front. Phillips came from behind. They spoiled each other in the air in the end. Mules scrapping. Hunt can't pick up cleanly. Well done by the Crows in there. Now Mules forced to tackle on Pritchard. Fitzgerald felt the pressure coming from Marinoff. Handballed in the sense to space to herself. Little tap. Now Fitzgerald's got to go again. And it's Morris Dalton who's got Munyard. Still the Adelaide Crows come. Newman. Lynch gets on the end of it. Again, so composed, Lynch. Gee, they've taken a lot of punches, this Bulldogs defence, and they're still standing. Just so composed. What I love is just this belief in how they carry themselves and like, just having the opportunity to play a few games uninterrupted. It's probably done them the world of good. So, Raychek. Najwa Allen. Oh, Aaron Phillips on Lynch. Phillips got shoved in the back. 
Lynch knew as soon as the umpire blew his whistle. And when you're playing on a player like Aaron Phillips, deep inside your defensive 50, defenders can get a little bit jumpy and can just give away some free kicks. I'm not quite sure what happened there. Not much in it, but we talked about moments and Erin Phillips has a moment. She has an opportunity to bring it back. It hasn't been her game. There's still a long way to go. The star veteran directly in front. Doesn't make the distance. Chance here for Woodland. Tackled by Moody. The umpire says it'll be a ball up, not holding. There's the goal kicker so far for the Crows in this season. Moody for Ferris. Can handle, can't get out of strife. Button wrapped her up. And the umpire has blown his whistle and it'll be a free kick for the Bulldogs. It was a push. You notice Adelaide are a side that uh, for Ford 50 stoppages, they often have a midfielder take the ruck tap. It was uh, Phillips in the first quarter and then Hatchard then. They've got strong bodied midfielders who can do that, but it also allows their ruck to drop out outside defensive 50 and form part of that defensive layer. Well played by Isabel Pritchard then for the Bulldogs. She was outnumbered. Morris Dalton, good reaction. Oh, it's gone out of bounds. So it'll come back. Morris Dalton's a really good contested mark. And even if she's not taking it, she just, her, her, her physicality in the marking contest really creates some fantastic defensive spoils, moves the ball out or moves the opposition player's vision out of line, create, creating a, t a, a turnover or a stoppage or a 50-50 contest where her team can go again. Great young player physically. Charlton forward, backing back Ferris. Phillips gets a look at it. Handball's off to Ponta. Ponta throws it on the outside of the boot and misses. He's certainly looking dangerous though here, Adelaide. Just getting the, the footy forward, just getting some territory early. So they've been to held to just three goals in this game. The high scoring Adelaide Crows juggernaut. Well, to win the game, Cal. They've got to kick more than their current score to beat the Western Bulldogs today. Ferris to the pack. Oh, McKinnon with the leap. Over the top. Lamb applies the tackle on Martin. It's Rochelle Martin, younger sister of Hannah Button. One of the hardest players to tackle in the comp, and Kirsty Lamb needed to make sure she stuck that to get the ball over the boundary and create the 50-50. 153 centimetres. Shortest player in the competition. That's shorter than me, Kel. <laughs> Very hard. I didn't think it was possible, Shiloh. Blackburn takes on Martin. The pocket rocket gets her kick away. Allen, a fumble. Sarah Allen, you don't say that too often. Too good. Charging him as Moody. Look how desperate this is. Nothing clean. They're like seagulls around a packet of chips at the moment. Problem is the seagulls can't pick up the chips. Now Charlton handballs off to Najwa Allen. Got a little bit of run here, Munyat. Munyat over the top to Ponta. Rarely fumbles. She's caught and the tackle, which was applied by Pritchard, I think, affects it. Still they go in. Phillips tries to charge in. Lynch takes her off the ball. Emerging with the football is Pritchard and they continue to stand up this Western Bulldogs defence. The work rate of Kirsty Lamb right now, she's about to receive the footy. She has started behind the footy. She pushed inside defensively, realised they were going to win the footy deep and then spread as far as she could on the far side of the ground. And now she's able to take the mark and kick the footy downfield. A lot of possession, a lot of attacking. And they're penetrating forward, the Adelaide Crows, in this quarter. But they have not scored a goal since the 12-minute mark of the second term. And that was a little... Reckless and over the top by Bailey Hunt. She probably had a case there, Bailey Hunt. <laughs> Don't let me ask a question. Polite. One thing I've noticed, um, Adelaide had sent a forward up into the stoppage uh, a minute or so ago. So they're playing with one forward down. The doggies have a loose behind the ball. So that will help them defensively. But Adelaide need to use that extra number at the source. Alicia Eva, Shiloh Curtis, your commentators this afternoon for this contest. Play on advantage, the umpire says. Hartwick goes out, gets there first before Phillips and gets her kick away, but it was out of bounds on the full. So it was 
Katie Lynch in that scenario, the spare defender back for the Bulldogs. Sarah Hartwick. And Marinoff. Charlton wheels around. A chance for Whiteley. She flew. Couldn't control it. Danger here for the Bulldogs defence. Whiteley. Phillips goes to ground. Fitzgerald. Clean. Cranston. Back to Fitzgerald. Well played by the Dogs. Hunt draws the defender. Handballs over the top. It was going to be play on advantage. She was taken high was Hunt. In fact, it's a downfield free yep. kick. Morris Dalton. She's kicked a goal this afternoon. That was ambitious. Around the player manning the mark. Najwa Allen, no. But the Crows, yes. Hatchard. Who's there? Steaming out. Whiteley. And there's that out number that the dogs have behind the ball, just cleaning up there. Oh, and look out. Brown had to be quick. She wasn't quick enough. And Ashley Woodland is going to be rewarded. A hot tackle. Perfect execution. And it's going to result in a set shot directly in front for the leading goal kicker for the Adelaide Crows this year. Oh, good pressure there from the forwards. They had the opportunity. The ball came inside and they just let the ball out too easily previous occasions. So good work by them to just make sure they could nail Eleanor Brown in that tackle. Fantastic work. She's tough, Woodland. She had a tooth knocked out at training this week. Had to put the tooth in milk. Had to go straight to the emergency dentist. New mouth guard. Still the same kick. Woodland converts. And she's kicked a nice goal there off the back of a chase down tackle. Now, if that doesn't get your team going from a key forward, a chase down tackle, I'm not sure what does. So they'll be looking, they'll be looking to win this centre bounce here. Um, defending that we know the dog has been really dangerous from centre bounce, but the Crows have a little sniff here. I think the ball spent more time in their forward half this quarter. So I would say momentum swinging. Ever so slow. Ashley Woodland gone to the bench for a breather. They had to refit the mouth guard Shiloh in the last few days. Very uncomfortable. So tough at training. That's how hard she goes that she had her tooth knocked out. Well, just before this bounce, both midfields deep in conference. How this next set of clearance is going to play out. All important for what might happen in the rest of the game. In fact, the umpire, I think, is giving a warning, asking the players to reset. And look, that, that's probably a product of the, bull, the Bulldogs trying to manufacture a spare behind the ball. How many minutes to go in this quarter? Four minutes to go. They don't want to concede too many scores. So there's a forward. There's pro they're probably looking to slide a wing or a forward to have that extra back behind the ball. Edmonds and Gould. Edmonds at ground level. Picked up by Phillips. Blazes away. Over the head it went of Charlton. Dogs quick, that was. By guest to Blackburn. Handball was too hot. Has to go back and try and win the footy. She just shoves Tia Charlton off the footy. And she did that illegally. It'll be a free kick for the 19-year-old. Well, we know that the Crows are coming prior to that stoppage then, Cal. The Western Bulldogs have had eight disposals this quarter in their forward half. The, the Crows, sorry, the Western Bulldogs in the forward half. Crows, 25 touches already. Charlton, a couple of kicks out. They need goals, they need them quickly, and Mules is on the end of that one. Turns around, spins, and delivers perfectly to the woman that's been waiting for her moment. Hasn't been her game, Shiloh Curtis has told us, but Erin Phillips has the Sharon in her hands within 50 of goals, and it's always a dangerous proposition. Four behinds last week for Erin Phillips against the Blues. Didn't have her kicking boots on. Didn't get the distance a moment ago and then misses this to the near side. Just a little bit of tension in the kicking for Erin Phillips to highlight the tension that this game is poised at at the moment. Three minutes before the last change. Dogs by 15 points. They led it by as much as 24. They've led from the very start. They put the first three majors on the board. But it's been the Adelaide Crows coming. 10 to two inside 50s in this quarter. And the dogs are trying to hold strong. 
Well, look at that, Kel. Time and forward half. The Crows 81%. And I think, look, a brilliant coaching move this quarter by Matthew Clark is to bring that extra forward up into the stoppage. The Bulldogs, are, if you look at the back of that's the winger there, but they've had to uh, fight at the stoppage one down for most of this quarter. The Adelaide Crows have had more numbers, so they, they lock the ball inside their forward half. Tia Charlton was that spare player in that stoppage, as you pointed out, Alicia. Great insight. Absolutely love it. Smart there by Jess Stathis. Didn't let the ball get out. Held the ball in. Let herself be tackled. Created another stoppage. Edmonds Blackburn goes without it. There's the tackling machine in Ebony Marinoff. And of course, stoppages, they wind down the clock. They reduce opportunity for the Adelaide Crows to move the footy forward, get those scores. We know they've still got to kick three goals if they're going to win the game. Marinoff goes again. Yeah! Manya. Hatchard spears it down low. Skittles the pack. Going without it was Lynch. Phillips tries to barge through. Guest. Brown. Guest. Into space. They've worked it to the wing. Georgia Stathis. In fact, it was Snell rather. Now a high ball. And it's all the Bulldogs back there. Celine Moody with the relieving defensive mark. Out wide to Fitzgerald. Smart footballer. She's covered some Ks today, Kel. Wheels around. Caught behind was Georgia Stathis. Button puts her body on the line. Morris Dalton wraps her up. So 60 seconds left. They're going to want to just play it slow here. Not concede. Really important if the dogs are going to win. They've been in a winning position, Shiloh, against another top team, Fremantle, at Witten Over a couple of weeks ago. And it was heartbreak for them right at the end when Ebony Antonio snared that amazing goal in the pocket. And they're not bad losses to have, Cal, as you're, as you're a developing team, because though they teach you a lot. They teach you how to win. They teach you how not to lose these close games. And maybe there'll be some wisdom that'll come from it when that final siren comes today. So you probably just take your time here. So maintain possession. Maintain. Don't worry about scoring. You find a mark with 30 seconds to go. Too good. 50-50 ball, Allen, Rachich over the top. Chance for the Crows, maybe. There might be time. Gould needs to move it quickly. Fans are engaged. She'll be looking up and she'll be seeing a lot of Bulldogs players behind the ball, so she's got to change angles here. Which is exactly what she does to Munyard, who takes off. She's got speed, she's caught, and she wants to go out with it, does Hannah Munyard. She doesn't like the way she was dealt with. Snell, the youngster, just says, hey, hey, I didn't do anything wrong. And the bit of frustration for Hannah Munyard bubbling to the surf. And they've skipped up to eighth. We talked about matchups. We've got Blackburn and Marinoff in the middle. Oof. Here we go. Final term from Norwood Oval in the sweltering heat. What has it got in store for us? It's got Erin Phillips bursting out of the centre, kicking to half forward. Hartwick keeps her feet, does well. Handball's under pressure. Marinoff. Her handball, a little awkward for Phillips. Puts it out to Hatchard. The star three mids combined. Hatchard kicks under pressure. Whiteley back to Woodland and takes it over the boundary. And that's absolutely the start that the Adelaide supporters will be looking for. All three of their big mids getting involved in that chain there. And when they had the football leash, they just hand passed the footy forward. They backed their teammate in and ran ahead of the footy and just willed the football forward and get ahead of the traffic. Dogs kicked the first for the afternoon. In fact, they kicked the first three. They've led at every change. Crows yet to be in front for this whole contest. Phillips in the ruck, handballing to Jones. Off to Hatchard. Squeezes the kick. Charlton's down there. So too their leading goal kicker in Woodland. Nothing's easy at the moment. Mules with a little fake. Tried to step around. And what about the tackle from Izzy Grant? There's not much of her. But she knows her way around her football ground, and that is a brilliant tackle. Well, she did a really good job there not to give away the free kick and not to let that player through. Edmonds and Phillips. Uh, Moody, rather, it was, and Phillips. She'll be everywhere, willing herself to the contest after contest. It comes out to Marinoff, spins onto her preferred left, and there's Whiteley. 
Lisa Whiteley, the most unlikely of forwards for the Adelaide Crows. Playing just her 12th game and kicked just her one goal so far, plus the one earlier today. So she's got two. And from directly in front, relief for Whiteley. She puts it through. Look, Erin Phillips has got going this quarter. Uh, the first centre bounce clearance and just a couple of really important composed handballs to teammates in better position from from handy ruck work, I would suggest. Well, is there a thing she can't do? Erin Phillips, they've rolled her into the ruck. Sean Greek style. They're using four mids as their ruck, as their midfield and they're using it. One of their mids is their ruck. So it's a smart move by the Crows to put four of their best players around the football. And running hot, Erin Phillips, five touches. Western Bulldogs this quarter, one touch. She had four touches in the opening half. Correct. Can't, cannot keep a superstar down for a whole game. She is an absolute champion of this, of this competition. Game's on the line. Phillips has come to play. Umpire's blown his whistle. It's going to come back. It'll be a free kick to Blackburn. What a test for the young pups. Can they hold their nerve? with one of the Premiership favourites breathing down their neck in this final term. Going to learn a lot about these two sides in the next 13 minutes. Moody, bit too much on it. Jones, in the end, really handles to herself, and now a toe poke. Marinoff, happy to hold it up. Well, the Crows really stuffed that up then. They had five <laughs> players, I know that's my technical commentary yes. speak today, but they had five players around the contest and didn't win the football. Now they're in a 50-50. Gould, Thompson, toe poke, Mills tries to flick it up to her own advantage. Martin, no one can catch her. Smallest player out there. And Lynch takes the defensive mark. I would say that's really clever ruck work there by Gould. She went for the longer hit there to get the ball out in space. The doggies were probably probably wanting it in tight uh, to, at worst, get a repeat stoppage. So Adelaide are looking to clearly get some territory and get the ball out into some space. Interesting slow play by the Western Bulldogs. They know time's on their side, but I hope they're not going to try and save it. They're going to need to try and win it against this opposition. Moody backing back in the pack. That's a wonderful mark. Hasn't she been fantastic this season, Kel? Both the Moody girls just phenomenal, but Celine just gone up a notch this year. And the delivery was pretty pinpoint as well to Snell. Adrenaline pumping after she got in a scrap at three-quarter time. And the kick and delivery was perfect. Precision placement to Bonnie Toogood. Oh, too good. Used her body so well. Then she was caught behind the contest. Watched the football, the what, the flight of the ball. It was a nice up and under type kick, and she knew it was going to float over the back and just nudged her opponent out of the way. And now too good has a shot. When we look at uh, time in forward half in the third quarter, there wasn't much opportunity for too good. So when the ball's in her air area, she is impacting. Already kicked one this afternoon. Too good. High pressure, and she delivers for her side. Well, that's huge. She's, she is playing a big, big game. Uh, hit just two goals now, um, but those score involvements that I keep banging on about, she's been huge up uh, in the attacking mid for the dogs, and again, deep inside 50, and just really clever use of her body there to own the, the drop of the ball. Smart forward craft. The thing about the Western Bulldogs, they're not getting a lot of opportunity in their forward half, but when they do, they're using it well and they're impacting the scoreboard. The Adelaide Crows, not so much. It's probably won't been one of the more inefficient games we've seen from them. So the Adelaide Crows, total disposals in this term, 22 to 7. And we're at one goal apiece. That is a big win for the Dogs. Whiteley with the goal for the Crows and too good for the Dogs. We reset and go again. The margin is 15 points. Edmonds tackled, not rewarded, crowd didn't like it. Phillips spun around by Snell. Play on, says the umpire, and it's Blackburn to Cranston. Cranston's toe poke, almost stubbed her toe, and then Rachich was coming, and Najwa Allen has just about beheaded Nell Morris-Dalton. Well, she's a tough kid, Nell Morris-Dalton, you see here. She gets lower and harder, she attacks the footy, puts her body on the side, knew she got, was going to get there first, and if she did, a good chance of a free kick. She Already got, one goal this afternoon. She got the distance, Alicia. She's a big kick, but no, I think this will drop short. 
top of the square, deliberately placed top of the square. For Celine Moody to fly. The leaper in the pack, surrounded by Crows jumpers. Rajic, in Phil Phillips rather, covering every blade of grass in this last term. Whiteley has given it off to Ponta. Ponta under the pump. Off to Woodland she goes. Has a bounce. Eyes light up. Open goal square. She's had the magic golden touch and she's still got it in 2022. I think Adelaide have looked most dangerous today when it's just been gaining territory in a bit of a chaotic way. They haven't been able to move the ball the way that they usually would like to, those short kicks, hitting lead-ups. The Doggies have done a really great job in defending that, but the Crows have looked really dangerous when they've just got territory going forward. And that's where they've scored today, Leash, when they've been able to get the ball out or they get that plus one and, the, you know, forward of the contest, that's when they've had their best opportunities in the forward half. Delisted from the Ds. Came back home to Adelaide, surrounded herself with her family and friends. And now with two for the afternoon, she leapfrogs the Demons forward in Taylor Harris as the leading goal kicker for the season with a dozen. Woodland with 12 and out of the centre they go again, trying to break clear. Although the Dogs through Hunt. It's a high ball. Leaping in from the side was Rachich. Bedell kicks around her body. McKinnon was good just to dab it down in the direction. She saw a couple of jumpers out of the corner of her eye. Munyard with the kick. Charlton can't break the tackle. Gives it off to the hot hand in Woodland. Phillips is there as well. Got themselves in a pickle. And Lamb couldn't clear it. What about this smother? Well done. Fair enough. Well, you see the desperation for players in the vicinity there just all desperate to try and impact the contest impact the game big couple of weeks coming up for ebony marinoff today's game number 47 she's due to become the first player to reach 50 round nine against collingwood at home she wouldn't care about that right now all she cares about is the four points and getting her team back on the top of the ladder. So you notice that that's, that last stoppage, Adelaide didn't have that forward come up into that stoppage, which means that they've had five in the forward line and the Bulldogs don't have a loose player down there to mop up. So that's a move by Matthew Clark there. They're edging close up, the Crows. Ali Blackburn on the bench still. Just the two touches this quarter. Two goals to one in this final term. Adelaide. And the Dogs have kicked straight to the Adelaide Crows. Najwa Allen. And she's going to kick it over the head of Button. Pritchard does well. Marinoff with that tackle. That is a crunching tackle she's laid on Pritchard. It feels like Shiloh, every tackle in this final term has got an extra bit of oomph about it. Well, there's so much riding on these moments. Kel, it's do you let the footy out? Do you trap the footy in? Do you give away a free kick for diving on the footy and not letting it out? Making the right decision at the right time is so critical. Blackburn on the bench and getting a bit of work. She looks like she might be a little uncomfortable. Rychek, who's had a great season. <laughs> well, she's a former W League player. She was the captain of the Adelaide Reds, and she showed us there her fancy footwork. Marinoff has lifted here in terms of her defensive pressure. We saw that smother earlier, the tackle just a minute ago, and then holding the ball there. She's certainly lifted in this last is, quarter. This is a goal assist to the pack. Moody, who's there? Charging through. Stevie Lee Thompson doesn't need much time and space. Stevie Lee, that is super. Well, that's why this team has won two premierships in this competition. It's why they are the premiership favourites for this year, because they can rise. They've had to come from behind. They only kicked the three goals in the first half. And the way in which they were finishing this game off, they've got runners from behind. They've got contributors at the contest. They've got tacklers. And they know, they know that they can pull this off. Well, they have responded in the most impressive fashion, the Adelaide Crows. And now there's just three points in it, Alicia. 
Yeah, and it's no surprise when you've got Marinoff, Hatchard and Phillips all firing in this quarter. And I think Marinoff had a quieter third term by her standards. She still had the 25 disposals, but she has certainly got going in this last quarter. Not just get, finding the footy herself, but her defensive pressure. Phillips to Marinoff, stripped of it, Lamb. Great smother, Hatchard. Those three have certainly lifted. The three big guns in the middle, Phillips, Marinoff and Hatchard. Dogs are struggling to contain them in this final term. Phillips, eight touches this quarter. Marinoff, five. Hatchard, four. Blackburn, two. McKinnon v Moody. Oh, what about that tackle? Ferocious on Hatchard. Wins a free. And takes off. See something she likes further down the ground. In position A was Woodland. So Nathan Burke declared they his players never ever give up. I wonder if he still feels like that with five minutes to play in this one. Three-point ball game. Here go the Crows again. Marinoff been a superstar in this final term. Out into space. Foot race is on. What about the pick? footwork. The handball over to Whiteley. Whiteley. Whiteley, the most unlikely of us heroes, but she misses. Former Giants player, played alongside you, Alicia Eva. Incredible to think she's even won a spot in this star-studded Adelaide Crows forward line. She's certainly adding something down there, though. We just saw her crash the pack earlier, about 30 seconds earlier, then to get back, find herself with ball in hand, and she's, hit this, she's kicked two goals today, so she's been important for them, very important. Pick up from Ponta. Oh, oh, electrifying. Rajic. Martin. Look how desperate they are, just crunching in from every angle. It's probably a great time to watch the Adelaide Crows when the pressure's really on them, who stands up and who rises, because they are such a wonderful unit of footballers. It's great to watch these kind of games from them. Pressure rises, tension rises. Launching at it there. Too good, a long way from home. Burying, trying to barge her way through was Martin. Still Martin goes. She will never, ever give up. So Western Bulldogs clearly have a sixth behind the footy there. That's why you'll see Bonnie Too Good down there. And it was a push in the back. We've spoken a lot about Lynch, Brown and the defence, but Ash Guest has been fantastic for the Western Bulldogs in defence today. Just really good distribution, good decision making, really broader experience. To the pack she goes. Off hands, Hunt. What the Bulldogs need to be careful of, if they've sent a forward back behind the ball, Adelaide haven't equalised that, so they have a plus one that the Bulldogs are kicking long down the line to. So when the Bulldogs, if they win the ball in the defensive half, they need to try and use their outnumber. Edge of your seat, staff at Norwood Oval. Gould in the ruck, down to Phillips. Off balance, somehow it comes back out to Gould. The ruck steps around, and then a lucky kick. Luck's a fortune, Hannah Button's taken the mark directly in front. So she missed a sitter earlier in this match. Hannah Button hasn't kicked a goal this year. Has she got the distance in her right boot? Sends it on its way. It's going to be touched. It stays in. Frantic, frantic scramble on the goal line. And it was touched as it rolls over. One point the difference. The Crows have not led at all today. This is massive. Man. Now Morris Dalton has just hobbled over the line. A calf doesn't look great. Let's hope it's just cramped Shiloh. But she's a long way from the interchange gate. So if she comes off there, she's done for the game. Not too many minutes left. And they're down a player at the moment, the Western Bulldogs, in their back half. Blackburn there's, looking there's for despair. Cranston. Yep. There's the spare player I was talking about. The acting captain, what can she set up? Wants to move it quickly. She's got players in space. Unable to take the mark. Lynch at the drop. Charging through. Lamb, as she's done all day. 
and Button wraps her up. Alicia Eva, if you're the captain of the Bulldogs, do you just try and hold on now? Everyone's got to find a player here. Everyone's got to find a player. Repeat stoppages are fine. And if you can win it, even better. But repeat stoppages are fine. Crows are coming. They've been pushing and pressuring. They've dominated this final turn. Dogs led it by 24 points in the second quarter. Another stoppage here. This is tense times. This is one of those moments where you need everyone finding their opponent, locking on, being really connected, staying calm and communicating what needs to happen at each stoppage of play. Free kick. It'll go the way of the Crows in the ruck against Edmonds. Gould has got it. She doesn't muck around. Goes to two players. Oh, from the side. Launching herself was Phillips. And the umpire says, yes, it's been paid. Who else? Of course, the Golden Girl with the free kick and a controversial one at that. Oh, yeah, was it there? Yeah, it's a Absolutely. 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 That's the moment, Cal. That is the moment. 15 second half disposals. They have not hit the front at all this afternoon. The game is in the hands of Erin Phillips. Phillips is offline, but a mark not paid in the contest. A scrap, a chance. Players from right across the ground are there. This is insane. They cannot concede the Western Bulldogs. Neither team can concede. The Adelaide Crows need a goal to win the game. That's and the Dogs cannot concede a point. Turned into a, uh, a the... game of rugby league here. <laughs> This is extraordinary stuff. We've never seen anything like it in the AFLW. Lamb says she was taken high. One of the best players out there this afternoon. There are 32 players around this ball inside the forward 50, maybe inside 30. It's chaos. Final seconds. Gould, not quite. Still it goes. Phillips, Phillips, was she taken high? Umpires put the whistle away. They pile on. Can't even see the Sharon in there. 28 seconds. The dogs are 28 seconds away from one of their most famous victories. They haven't won on the road for over two years. The Adelaide Crows are undefeated in this season. Will they be undefeated after this one? Again, we've never seen anything like it. It is extraordinary uh, scenes in the Adelaide Crows goal square. Well, we know when you see repeated stoppages, the umpires look for a free kick. They cannot see anything here right now. Brave umpire to call a free. If it's there, they will. Gould, Morris Dalton goes to ground. They come in from all angles. And the umpire has seen something and he has blown his whistle and it is a free kick to the Bulldogs. They might be able to hold on here. Pritchard, who's been brilliant this afternoon. Well, they've got 30 seconds to use the ball. Five seconds on the clock. Seven seconds, Pritchard, and the siren sounds, 